Hi y'all, this is Mrs. D and today we're going to be going over multiplying decimals. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, first when we're multiplying decimals we want to multiply the numbers just like you would multiply whole numbers. So let's go ahead and try one here. Now that means that we're going to ignore the decimal at this point. We're just going to multiply the numbers. So I have 1 and 53 hundredths times 4 tenths. So 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 5 is 20, plus 1 is 21, 4 plus 2 is 6. Now I don't have to worry about my 0 here, I'm done with the 4, but the 0 would just make this whole row zeros, so I don't need to worry about that at all. So let's go ahead and multiply this other problem here. Now this one has double digits on the bottom, so it's going to be a little different, but let's recap multiplying numbers. 1 times 5 is 5, 5 times 4 is 20, 5 times 3 is 15, 16, 17. Now I'm finished with the 5, so I have to put a 0 here before I can multiply by my tens digit. So 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 3 is 6. And then I have to add these two rows together, so I have 5, 2, 15, and 8. Now one of the things with multiplying decimals that actually makes it really simple is you don't have to line up your decimal. If you notice over here in the second example, they're already lined up for us, but that's just because it only goes to the tenths position. If you look here at the first problem, we have 53 hundredths and 4 tenths, and those are not in the same position, so your decimal is not lined up and that's okay. So adding and subtracting, you have to line them up. Multiplying, you do not. So for our second step here, after we've multiplied the numbers, we're going to count the total digits after the decimals in the problem, and then we're going to move the decimal back in the answer the same amount. So here's our first problem that we did on the last step. And so we ended up with 612, but we know that's not the final answer because if you look here, we have a little over one and a half times a number less than one. So there's no way that we can multiply one and a half times a number smaller than one and end up with a giant number of 612. If you understand multiplication, multiplication gets bigger and bigger as you multiply. Well, once you put a decimal in the problem, now we have to put that decimal somewhere in the answer. So let's look up here first. Count the total digits after the decimal in the problem. So if we look at the problem here, in the first row we have one, two places after the decimal, and in the second part of the problem we have one place after the decimal. So what we're going to do is add those up. We're going to count the total digits and that makes three total. So we're going to go down here in our answer. Now we have to move this decimal. So right now this is a whole number, 612, and so I'm going to put my decimal here and it's telling me I'm going to move my decimal one, two, three positions backwards and then I put it here. So my final answer is zero, 0.612 or 612 thousandths. Let's try our second one. So this was our problem for the second one. We ended up with 8,525. Now, if I were to round these decimals, okay, I have 34.1, I'm going to round that to 34. Then I have two and a half here. I'm going to go ahead and round that to three. Well, four times three is 12, and that's nine, 10. So that's 102. So that means that 102 is, an, is a high estimation of my answer. And 8,525 is not anywhere close to 102. So that tells you right now that you don't have a decimal in the right place yet. So let's go back to our situation up here. Count the total digits after the decimal in the problem, then move the decimal back the same amount in the answer. 
So in this first row, I have one place after the decimal. In my second row, I have one place after the decimal. Well, one plus one is two. So now I'm gonna move my decimal back one, two places, and it ends up being 85 and 25 hundredths. Now, 85, is that close to 102? Yes, definitely much closer. Now this is kind of a high estimate because we rounded up. We were right in the middle at two and a half and we rounded up. If you wanna actually check it, you can also multiply times two by rounding down and that gets you 68. So this answer should be somewhere right in between 68 and 102. 85 and, two, and 25 hundredths is definitely between that. Now for this third step, this is just kind of an extension because we're not lining up the decimals, which means the easiest way to multiply numbers is we wanna place the number with less digits on the bottom, then multiply and then move the decimal. So if I have this problem right here, five and two tenths times one and 43 hundredths, even though this one has more places after the decimal, this number five and two tenths has less digits. So I'm gonna put that on the bottom. So when I'm gonna multiply here, I'm gonna do one and 43 hundredths times five and two tenths, and then I'm gonna multiply. So let's go ahead and multiply this out. Three times two is six, two times four is eight, two times one is two. I'm finished with the two. Now I need to bring down a zero so that I can fill this place. Five times three is 15. Five times four is 20 plus one is 21, five, six, seven. Now I'm gonna add these up. So now I have six, 13, four, and seven. Once I've done that, I can go back up here to my original problem and I have one, two places after the decimal in the first row, one place after the decimal in the second row, two times one is three. So I'm gonna move my decimal three places total. I'm gonna start way back here at the very end of the problem and I'm gonna move it one, two, three places so my decimal goes here. So I have seven and 436 thousandths. For example two, again, I don't have to worry about lining up my decimals, so I wanna put the number with less digits on the bottom. So in this case, even though five is greater than two, I'm still gonna put the two and three hundredths on top and five on the bottom. Now, the reason being, if I put two and three hundredths on the bottom, I'm gonna end up with at least two rows down here that I have to add up later. This avoids that. Now I just have one digit to multiply by. Five times three is 15. Five times zero is zero. Plus one is one. Two times five is 10. Now all I have to do is check and move my decimals. So in this first row, I have one, two places after the decimal. In the second row, I have zero. So my total now to move it is two places. So we're gonna go one, two, so my answer is 10 and 15 hundredths. I know we're getting the hang of this, so let's go ahead and try a couple more practice problems. So now I have one and a half times 595 thousandths. Now again, this has two digits, this one has three. So let's go ahead and put the larger digit number on top. Go ahead and pause the video and solve this one and then we'll check your work. Okay, let's go ahead and check your work on this one. So we're gonna start with our five here. Five times five is 25. Five times nine is 45 plus two is 47. 
5 times 5 is 25, plus 4 is 29, and 5 times 0 is 0. Now I'm done with the 5, I'm going to put a placeholder here, and now I'm going to multiply by 1, so that means this is going to be 5, 9, 5, and I can go ahead and add them up. Okay, so I have 8,925. In this first row here, I have 1, 2, 3 three numbers after the decimal. In the second row, I have one number after the decimal. Three plus one is four, so I'm gonna move it one, two, three, four places. This one ends up being 8,925 ten thousandths. And if you notice, we're multiplying one and a half times a number less than one. So we're definitely gonna end up getting an answer less than one. All right, for your last example, I'm gonna let you set this one up and solve it. So go ahead and pause the video and you can play it whenever you're ready to check your answer. Okay, let's go ahead and check your answer on this one. So I'm gonna put 40 and 5 tenths on top. And if you notice for this one, because we have a zero here, they're actually the same number of digits. But this one ends up being the bigger one because of where the decimal is, and it's just a little easier to work with a zero when it's not in the middle. So let's go ahead and set it up this way. If you set it up the other way, you can still check your work. It's just not gonna be the same process, but your answer should be the same. Five times three is 15. 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 3 times 4 is 12. Now, this is where a lot of people make a mistake, and so I'm going to go ahead and mark out that 3 and put my 0 placeholder and start with 2. 2 times 5 is 10. Carry the 1. Now, 2 times 0 is 0, so then I'm going to add my 1 and get 1. A lot of times people will do that one incorrectly, and they'll end up saying, well, 2 times 0 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So make sure you remember that 2 times any or any number times 0 is 0. Then 2 times 4 is 8. Now I can go ahead and add them up. I don't have to do this last number because it's a 0, so it'd be a row of zeros. You can skip that. So when I add them up, I get 5, 1, 3, 9. Then I'm going to go back to my original problem and count my decimals. So I have one place after the decimal here, and one, two places after the decimal here. My total decimals in the problem is three, so I'm gonna move it one, two, three. In the answer, I end up with nine and 315 thousandths. Let's go ahead and recap our steps here. So first we want to multiply the numbers just like you would multiply whole numbers. Don't worry about the decimal, just find the number answer. Then we're going to count the total digits after the decimal in the problem, take that total number and move the decimal back in the answer the same amount. And in order to solve these to make it easier on yourself, don't line up the decimals. You want to place the number with less digits on the bottom multiply, and then move your decimal. I hope this video is helpful for you to understand how to multiply decimals. If you still need more help, you can watch this video as much as you need to. Make sure you pause it and practice the problems on your own, and then be ready to ask specific questions if you still need help. This is Mrs. D signing off with Multiplying Decimals. I hope you have a great day. Bye.